Hi, all my JavaScript friends. This is the Virtuoid, and this is Fun with JavaScript, where we create fun projects together. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button below and hit the subscribe button to see all of the wonderful things we're going to be doing with our Fun with JavaScript series. Hello again, my internet friends. This is the Virtuoid, and in this video, we're going to be creating the card class. Now, if you recall correctly from our other videos, we first of all created the unit test to test our card class. Of course, as you can tell on the screen here, absolutely everything failed. And why is this? Well, the reason this is is because if you take a look at our card class, there's absolutely nothing there. And why is that? Well, the reason for that is is that we are doing what's called TDD or test driven development in which the basic idea here is we create all of our tests which i'll show you right here and our class should be able to pass this entire class or this entire set of tests and if it passes this test then our class is considered complete now one of the things i want to warn you about here is that we've pretty much gotten all of our test cases that at least we think of but if you're really doing this you know for a much larger project because this is obviously a very simple little project here uh, as you start designing, you may think of other things you may need to do with this particular uh, this particular class. In that case, the very easiest thing to do is to go back to your test cases and create new cases. Now, I can pretty much tell you we're not going to have to worry about that if we're in, this, in our cases here. Uh, so let's just get to it. Okay, so there's our card class. The idea here is that we're going to need to create... Let's bring up our test here. We're going to need to create the classes that will make these tests not fail. So let's start off with the properties. And we got a couple of properties here. First of all, we should be able to create a card specified by the parameters. And we'll take a look at the test here that will fail for that one. Uh, so also we're going to take a look at this one that we should not be able to change the suit and we should not be able to change the rank. And that will tell us that the suit property is going to be read only and that the rank property is going to be read only. And we should be able to change the value. That one actually passed, but that one passed because of the way JavaScript works. So I'm going to write it just a little bit differently to be very explicit to be able to say, I want this to be a read write property. So we're going to concentrate on those three. So let's take a look. Our first test, which was up here, we should be able to create a card by the parameters. These tests failed, so we don't have a suit, we don't have a rank, and we don't have a value. So let's go into our card class and let's create that. So first of all, we're going to have a suit, a rank, and a value. Now, notice that I'm using private variables here. Now, if you're not familiar with private variables, private variables allow you to define variables that are only used within this particular class. So if another class extends this, like for instance, if we created a standard card class or Uno card class that extends cards, we will not have access to suit, rank, or value. Suit, rank, or value are only available for this particular instance of card. So if that's the case, how, are an how will an application be able to get access to these variables? Well, those are through getter functions. JavaScript allows you to define what we call getter and setter functions. And a getter function is called any time the value is needed from a particular property. And a setter function is called any time that a value is changed on a particular property. So we're going to need a getter property for suit. And ours is just going to just simply, re whoops, simply return. Ah, I can't type here. That. So get suit is a getter function that now anytime any application says I need the value for suit, it will return the private variable this suit. And that makes the private variable accessible, but not changeable because we only have a getter here. So basically, we've now got a read only version of suit. So let's do the same thing for rank. And we're going to return this dot rank. And we'll do the same thing for value. And we're going to return this dot value. So that gives us a suit. We can now access suit, rank, and value. But right now, all three of them are read only because we have the getter functions. If we want to do something read write, we also have to do a setter function. And remember, back in our test, we should not be able to change the suit or rank, so we should have be done with suit and rank at this point. But we should be able to change the value. But we're not, we're not, uh, we're, we, our value is not correct at this point because the reason value is not correct is because we only have a getter function. So we're now going to need to use the setter function. And what value is assigned to it? We couldn't really care less. Whoops. Do it right. Here we go. Value equals new value. So whatever the calling application passes to us 
we put that into value. So that could be absolutely anything, a, a primitive object, a primitive value, an object, a function, I don't really care. It could be absolutely anything there. It doesn't really matter. So now we have a getter for the suit, getter for the rank, and that will get both of those read only because they do not have a setter. And we have a getter for value and a setter for value, so that should make it read right. Let's stop at this point and let's test to make sure that that actually works. So I should now have this one to be good, this one to be good, this one to be good, and this one still to be good, but gooder in a better way, if that's such a term. So let's npm run our test. Let's clear off the screen first. And let's run our test. Uh, but then I'll join you once it finishes up here. Alrighty, so we're back at it. We have six failing tests. Let's take a look at our test and find out what failed. Well, these two now pass. This one now passes. I said this one should pass, but it didn't. And why didn't it? Because the only thing I took, only thing I did here was to create the getter and setter functions for the values. I didn't create, I didn't change anything for creating the card specified for the parameters. So what do we use for creating a class or creating an instance of a class? That's the constructor. We did not put a constructor in there. That's my bad, but hey, that's what programming is all about. So let's put the constructor. We'll call it card parameters. And spell it right. Okay. So the card parameters are going to set the values of suit, rank, and value. Now let's take a look at our unit test. And I'm passing card parameters here, and I'm passing it as an object with suit, rank, and value. So obviously that's that's how me as the designer want to be able to pass the information to card. So card's got to do the same thing. So that's going to be a very easy thing to do. We'll do a deconstructor here. Suit, rank, value equals card parameters. I just can't spell today. Here we go. And then we just assign the values. This dot rank equals rank. And this dot, oops, value equals value. Now, remember earlier I said that these were getter functions, but there's no setter functions. So how are we able to change the values? Well, we're actually changing the values for suit and rank, not the private variables suit and rank. There's actually two different things there. So we're able to, remember, with private variables, we're able to change anything we want to within this class. We just can't, we're not allowing anybody outside the class to be able to change it. And one thing I like to do on the parameters is I'd like to set up a default value just to make sure absolutely everything is hunky-dory and correct. Because uh, one of the problems you're going to run into here is car parameters comes in as undefined, then you're going to have an error to come out to be in suit, rank, and value. You can't get those properties from an undefined value. So by setting a default value uh, within the arguments for the constructor, we can guarantee that suit, rank, and value will at least come in as undefined before anything else. So I always try to set a default value to kind of help uh, mitigate any kind of errors that may occur. Uh, in fact, let's show you that error. Let's 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 just show what that is. So we'll do card parameters there. We have absolutely nothing there. And let's let's save what we have and let's run our test one more time. So let's clear off the screen and we'll run it. And again, I'll join you. I'll join back to you here again once it finishes up. Okay, so now in our card.spec, we had one failing test. Now, why do we have a one failing test? Because it came back and said an uncalled error was detected outside the test. And it said the following error originated in your test code, not from Cypress, which says that you cannot destruct the property suit from car parameters as it is undefined. So that's what happens if you don't define a default parameter within your arguments. So let's flip back over to our code. And now let's set this back to equal, by default, an empty object. And that will work now because you can take the property of suit, rank, and value from an empty object. It's just all, all three of those should be undefined. And to prove that, let's save it and let's rerun our test. And again, I'll join you once it's finished. Okay, so now we have five passing and five failing. Let's take a look at what's passing and failing. And yep, hey, that was great. Now we got the blank card. Now we're creating the card specified parameters. We are not able to change the suit or the rank, and we are able to change the value, so that's great. So now we got to write the methods that will allow us to be able to get all three of these, all five of these tests failing uh, to work, to work. Excuse me, to to succeed. So. We should be able to find a card based upon the suit, based upon rank, based upon value, based upon all three properties, and then return undefined for the compared method. So let's take a look at our spec. 
and let's flip down here. So it looks like that we're going to have a method called is suit in which we're going to pass a string or pass a parameter that's going to be a suit parameter. So it looks like it's going to be a straight equal equal uh, type or, or triple equal type uh, comparison. Uh, is rank, same thing, triple equal comparison. Is value, same thing, triple equal comparison. Uh, find a card based upon all properties is going to be, we're going to pass a, oh, it looks like actually what we want, the designer wants to do here is actually pass another card to it. So we're comparing two cards and that's going to be the is card method. And then we have a compare method, which is going to return undefined. And I'll explain that one in just a second. So let's create those five methods. So we have is suit. And what that will do is it's going to return this dot suit, triple equal suit. And that's it. So it's going to return tr true if the suit that we pass is going, if, if, our if our card here has the same suit of the suit that is passed. Is rank, rank, return this dot rank, rank, good. Is value, Re oops, return this dot value, value. All right, is card. Now remember the card is actually going to return a full physical card. So what I'm going to do here is this return this dot is suit card dot suit and oop, yeah and this dot is rank card dot rank and this is whoops value Car dot value. So what we're what's happening? What, what's happening here? So basically, what we're doing here is we're we're basically reusing all three of the ones we just created here. We're going to test to make sure if the suit, if our suit equals the incoming card suit, and if our rank equals the incoming card rank, and if our value equals the incoming card value. So that should take care of those four, and they should run. Now, what about that compare method? And compare basically says, I want to compare these two cards. Now, what's the difference between the compare method and the is card method? Well, here's the problem you're going to have with doing the triple equal sign is that that works wonderful for primitive values. So, you know, if all your suits are, and your ranks and your values are primitive values, you can do all this all day long. But I guarantee you somebody's going to create cards that are either going to be a weird suit or a weird rank or weird value. And by me, what I mean by weird is something that's not a primitive value, an object, uh, a, uh, a function or something, something, something like that. And the triple equal sign or an array even, and a triple equal sign is just not going to handle it. So what we're going to need to be able to do is to have the application be able to define a compare function in case they have complex cards or complex values, complex suits, or complex complex ranks. So we need to allow them to be able to find a compare function that is specific to their particular application. Now, we don't know what that compare function needs to be because we have no clue what their suit's going to be, what the rank's going to be, what their value is going to be. So what we're going to do here is say return undefined. And that's it. And that basically says here, hey, I've got a compare function here. I don't know really what you want to do with it. I'm just going to return undefined. So what's going to happen is that when the application creates their own card, you know, for instance, a standard card or something like that, or, or an Uno card or whatever the card happens to be, they can define their own compare method. They can extend their own compare method and say, hey, okay, when I do a compare, I want it to actually compare this. Now, in that case, then they probably won't be using is rank, is suit, is value, or is card. Those are mostly convenient methods if you know you're using primitive values. So this will allow you to be, make a compare to function that is specific to your particular application. And basically what we've done here uh, is we've created what's called an abstract method. Now, 
I'm, I'm using the term very loosely there, obviously. Uh, if you're familiar with Java development, uh, especially, you know what an abstract uh, method or an abstract class and an abstract method is. And an abstract method is basically a method uh, that is defined, and all it is is just a definition. It has absolutely nothing else to it. But the idea here is that any class that extends this particular class must create their own compare method. Now, JavaScript ha does not have that concept whatsoever in here, so you have to kind of mimic it. And this is the way I've chosen to mimic mimic it is I'm basically saying, okay, I've got this compare function here and I'm going to return undefined within this repair function so that you can know that this particular function, if you wish to use it, needs to be defined by you. Now, if you don't have to use it, don't even have to you know write one. But if you want to use it, then you're going to have to write your own. I can't do it for you. So this is kind of, kind of, and I'm, do, I'm using the term very loosely, this is kind of like an abstract method on this particular class. And again, like I said, JavaScript does not have any concept for abstract methods, but hey, that's just the way it is. So is suit, is rank, is value, is card, and compare should be the same as here. Card is suit, is rank, is value, is card, pass in a card, and compare, pass in card is correct. So now let's find out if all of this works let's save let's go to our test suite let's clear off the screen and let's run our test now I'll join you when we're done and hey 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 would you look at that 10 passing test out of 10 with no failing Oh, isn't that pretty? So we've created our blank card. We've, cr we've created the card specified parameters. We've made certain that our suit is read only. We've made certain that our rank is read only. We're able to change the value. We've created a is suit method and is rank method and is the value method and is card method. And we've created a compare method that just returns undefined and returns absolutely nothing else. So that basically now creates our card class. All of our tests have passed. So if you think down the road, let's say a month from now, you're, you're running this card class, you thought, you know, I've created six more classes that have extended this class, and I've had to duplicate something in every single one of these classes. Wouldn't it be great if it was in this card class? That will be a good thing. What you want to do is you want to create yourself a test for that to test to make sure that you can you can add that in. That test will fail when you first run it. You then add your methods in there and or whatever it is inside your card class to be able to to pass the test. And you can keep doing that forever and ever and ever and you'll be and you'll have your card class completed and done. So this is the this is basically what test driven development is all about. I wrote my test first. Let's go over to our card. I wrote my test first. As you can see here, once I wrote my test and everything failed, except for two of them because of the way JavaScript works, I then wrote my class based upon the test. And once all the tests passed, I'm done. That's it. It's ready to go. There's nothing else to it. That's it. It's wonderful. So what I have done here, uh, uh, the, F, the FW, it's called FWJS-card. Uh, I'm going to make public that this particular repository now and the one I've got here is slightly different from what you're seeing here because I've got all the, everything commented out and everything and got all the nice pretty you know JS dot comments and all that kind of fun stuff and everything but basically it's all exactly the same as you as you're seeing uh, right here that's gonna be made public and also I do have this published out on NPM under at sign virtualoid slash card so if you wish to use this in your own project, you can go right ahead and, and I'll update that a little bit later on. Like for, for instance, when I first created this thing, I had value also as read only and I decided, nah, when I, before I started recording this, I decided no value is going to be read write. And when I did that, the first thing I did was, is I created a new test here to be able to make absolutely certain that the, um, oh, I just noticed there's an error in this test. That's interesting. Look, the test is outside the config. Well, we got to do this right, guys and gals. Sorry, I just was very sexist there. My apologies. But let's put that back inside here. It should still work. But that's one of the things you have to you know, take a look at. You will find errors. Don't be afraid to change things. This isn't written in stone. I made a stupid little mistake. So let's go ahead and rerun our test. We changed the test. We changed the test program. So we've got to rerun our test, make sure it's correct. We just can't change something that said, oh, it's going to work. No problem. You know, yeah, that's going to bite you. I can guarantee it. So I'll, I'll catch you here in a second once it's done.
And okay, it still worked. All right, great. So that was a little, you know, that's one of the things you're going to do when you look at this stuff. But anyway, so at Virtuoid uh, slash uh, card will, will give you the uh, Fun with JavaScript card that you can use to your heart's content. And of course, I'll be adding more later on down the road. Hey, thank you so much for uh, listening to this series of videos. Make sure you hit the like button below to like this video and the other videos that we have there and, and, and subscribe to this channel for any, any more of our fun with JavaScript series. Also our boring JavaScript series that we've been going on since the pandemic started uh, two years ago. Hey, so have a wonderful day and we'll see you later.